Hey, this is Walter Jones. This is Austin St. John. And you're listening to Ranger Danger. Welcome once again to Mighty Morphin Ranger Danger. This is the podcast where we inject episodes of the TV series Mighty Morphin Power Rangers directly into our eyeballs. Whoa. And then from our mouths, we emit op- opinions about I that I thought experience. you were going to go to veins, and I was like, that's a bit far. And no, whoa. No, the pat that goes in our eyeballs. That's how it happens. I'm not comfortable with the use of the word inject. Well, it's not wrong. Isn't it? I don't think so. How do you define inject? With It's... Moving from outside into the inside. Inject, inject. Uh, yeah, dictionary check. We need a segment sound for that. Look at brown. <laughs> to introduce a fluid into the body of a person or animal by means of a syringe or similar instrument. That's pretty close. Well, <laughs> a lot of the Thai Power Rangers is like a fluid. And you would say that a television is similar to a syringe? Yeah. Okay, well, you would be wrong, but that's fine. It's definitely the syringe of the media world. All right, so we're here to watch episode 106, Return of the Green Ranger, part three. Yeah, we're going to close this baby up. Incredibly disappointingly, probably. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we have a website, rangerdatapodcast.com. We have an email address, rangerdatapodcast at gmail.com. We're at rangerdcast on Twitter. You can also find us on Stitcher, YouTube, Google+, Plus. tune in, Google+, Plus again, more Google+, Plus. and we have a shop. YouTube. YouTube. Uh, our shop is rangerdangerpodcast.com slash shop, where you can get mugs and laptop covers and shirts and all sorts of rad stuff. Yeah. Um, Matt, we've got something this week, kind of. Oh. Do you remember many weeks ago, perhaps Definitely even, not. probably even many months ago, Ex- especially we not. talked about how we were relieved slash disappointed that there was no Ranger Danger fan fiction? Oh, yeah. And so we'd never received any. Several listeners threatened to send us some. Yep. Uh, but luckily, slash disappointingly, that never eventuated. Yep. We got an email actually several months ago from listener slash guest host Rick. Yes. Uh, and I completely, I read this email, made a note to talk about it on the podcast and completely forgot about it. He's made what he calls a sexy radio play. Oh my God. So here's the deal. Yep. I'm going to pause the recording. Yep. We're going to listen to it. Yep. If it's not horrifying, yep. you will hear it play. Okay. If the next thing you hear is us just screaming, yep. that's because it was so horrifying that we decided to save you from it. That's right. And if you don't hear this episode at all, it's because we died from it. Yeah. Sarah's coming soon. Yeah. She'll so discover the bodies and put the episode sh- up. I hope so. Yeah. Yep. So uh, good luck. Yep. And I hope we see you on the other side. I want something in there. Oh, that's tough, isn't oh, it? Oh, that's a hard one. Yeah. There's too much for me to take in. It's, oh, I'm so torn. Oh boy. <laughs> Wow, yeah, okay, so um, that was an experience. Yeah, I need to take about six weeks off and never see Matt again, I think. I definitely need to shower by myself, <laughs> I should be clear. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, I, I think we'll put that in. Yeah. You guys will know if we decided to put that in or not. I oh, God, I've just given him more ammunition. Uh, I? Everything I say now, I'm thinking about what Rick's going to do to it in relation to sexy music. We're lucky he didn't think to use the clips of us talking about Titanus. Oh, see, no one like pronounces it that way. Thankfully, we did. <laughs> oh, Rick, what are we going to do with you? Uh, I I appreciate the effort that you put in there, Rick. If not the results, <laughs> I mean, look, I was very impressed. I was just equally disturbed. <sighs> equally, if not more, so. I need. I need. Do you have like steel wool or something? No, but I'm pretty sure we could buy some drugs around here that we could just. Like, expunge that experience from our minds. Oh, boy. Even just, like, went to the chemist and got 
enough medications to put our cells into a coma for a while. Let's not let's not do that. All right. Okay. That'll so, be plan B if like, this episode doesn't get that imagery out of my head. So, thanks, Rick. <laughs> question mark. Uh, question mark. I, um, Rick in this email has says maybe it will inspire more talented listeners. And once again, I am entirely on the fence as to whether or not I hope it does. Yeah. I, I hope it happens and I never have to experience it. Yeah. That's where I sit on that one. How many podcasts do you reckon have had one of their listeners send in weird erotic audio plays about the hosts? We may be the first. I reckon there's probably not that many. No. No, really. I, I think we may be the first. I have no way of verifying that, but we should put that... On our website. That'll be like our pull quote. The first ever podcast to have an erotic audio fan play. I mean, I'm quite happy with the best and possibly only Power Rangers podcast in the Southern Hemisphere. Yeah. We could put both on. Rotating. Yeah. I mean, if you combine those two things, we're definitely the only one. Yeah. We are definitely the only Power Rangers podcast in the Southern Hemisphere where a guest host has sent in an erotic audio play cut from clips of earlier episodes. That's right. That's what we bring to you week after week. That's that's the level of quality we aspire to. On that note, let's go watch Return of the Green Ranger Part 3, Michael. Yeah, on that note, let's go see something horrible. <laughs> Yay! We'll be back soon, and uh, see you then. Bye, guys. Wait, wait. What? what? You always think you're ready for it. And just... What happened? <laughs> What was that all about? (laughs) Where did that come from? It somehow did everything I expected and nothing I expected. Or everything I expected, but then like eight other things that were insane. (laughs) Oh my God. Okay, so we open with Tommy waking up. Yeah. Um, That's all there is to that. We just have to to remember that he's awake. Yeah. Yeah. Rita is on Lord Zed's lap. God, this is weird. On the throne. Uh, Yeah. Oh. It's uncomfortable, right? It is uncomfortable. It's just something about it is not right. Because they're both grown ups and it's a throne and he doesn't have pants on, I think. I mean, he has a giant metal cod piece. <laughs> that doesn't count as pants. <laughs> That's fine. If I walked into a restaurant wearing just a giant metal <laughs> cod piece, uh, I would give you a million dollars. <laughs> you wouldn't be like, oh, he's dressed appropriately for this place. That's fine. I understand. So Lord Zed just sends a message down to the wizard and just says, you know, like, hey, how's it going? Yeah. What's what the deal with how, how's the wizarding happening? And he's just like, oh, it's fine. I'm chilling. The wizard is clearly lying down. I think he's standing in front of some bales of hay. Bullshit. But it, it does look like he's lying down in some hay. Yeah. He's um, taking some time off. The wizard basically says, you know, it's all good. Everything's about to kick off. No yep. real reason to do anything, really. So Tommy summons the dragon sword. Still going. It's uh, very slowly rising out of the sea. A very conspicuous white guy yells into a megaphone to clear the area. Yeah. I'm so curious about like it was a good guy for a long time. Can they tell it's evil? Or is it just that whenever it comes out, it destroys Angel Grove's port system? Yeah, I like to think that that place has been rebuilt like 12 times. And they were like, okay, it's fine. We haven't seen it in six months. Let's set it back up. Yep. We're all good. Yep. It's like the first day it's opened again. Yeah, <laughs> the big reopening ceremony. <laughs> and all of a sudden they're like, all right, get the Dragon Zord foreman. He'll just let everybody know. Yep. <sighs> yeah. I <laughs> think there's like a documentation they have to fill out whenever that happens. Yeah. Like workplace incident. We've got a little flippy number. Six days since the world was destroyed <laughs> by the Dragon Zord. Yeah. Uh, so in the past, past Skull is eating some cheese. Yes. There's a guy in the stocks, yep. which are the things where your head and hands go through wood. holes in a bit of wood, so you're kind of trapped there. Um, the guy, he's, he's very upset about the cheese. He is, which I get. Like if you, It's basically being tortured, right? If there's strong sh- less, yeah. smelling cheese and you can't get away from it, that's not nice. I guess. So Skull's plan is... The witches are still out there. Yep. We'll search this way. Yep. The other team will search. Oh, look, it's the rats. Yep. These costumes are so bad. They're so bad, and they're the least effective monsters, because all they have done so far 
is chase people around incessantly. They haven't even gotten one generic townsperson to show that they're a threat. No. They've just been playing chases around this tiny town yep. all day. So the soldiers kind of run after slash away from them. It's hard to tell. The guy in the stocks yells, give him the cheese. <laughs> yeah. And he does it with like genuine desperation, like, the love of God, give them the cheese. <laughs> this would solve two of my problems. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the present, present Bulk and Skull bump into Tommy. Yeah. Um, and are needlessly mean. Tommy goes, have you seen the guys? And I'm like, why the fuck would we have seen the guys who we see every day all the time? Yeah. And Tommy's like, no, this is fucking serious, assholes. Yeah. Have you seen the guys? And Bulk and Skull are like, no. We, we just, said no. We just haven't. Like, I, I didn't say no but mean yes yeah i genuinely have not seen them yeah and Tommy's like all right and he goes to sit down because he's a bit woozy zordon contacts him and says look here's what's going on dragon zord's coming uh you got to do some fighting yeah if you morph you'll get some of your energy back for a little bit he tells alpha that he's very concerned about tommy yep and to make continuous visual contact because we find out for the first time that when the clone was created, it took some of Tommy's energy. Yeah. So that he's weakened. Yeah. The other, the clone doesn't seem to be weakened, which is odd. No, despite only having a fraction of Tommy's energy. Yeah. Yeah, so apparently the evil Green Ranger is using some of Tommy's powers. Yes. And to represent that, we see Tommy fall down some stairs. Yeah. In what looks like... Something that's actually quite dangerous. Yeah. Because those are stone stairs. There's no mat or anything. No. So uh, good on you, JDF, for doing a stunt. Yeah. So uh, the Wizard of... Menlo? No, that was Thomas Edison. Deception. Deception, that's it. Wizard of Deception. uh, Kind of goes over to where the dragon's audience. Yep. And says, energize yourself with evil. And shoots a ray at it. He gains pupils. He looks so goofy. He does. It's I just... don't know why that's supposed to make him look more evil. He does. He just looks goofy. He does look goofy. He looks like he'd be going what all of the time. <laughs> uh, it rips up a smokestack and just eats it. Yeah, we've seen that shot before, but it's pretty cool. Drills its tail through a wall. You know that smokestack shot is great, both in the fact that it looks really cool because it's a practical effect, and the stack looks like it has a weight to it when it's crushed. Yep. It's also great in that it's so unnecessary because he's already broken Destroyed off. Destroyed it, yep. yeah. The stack is the stack is gone. It's not going to make it any more broken to bite it. It's not particularly more convenient or less convenient for anyone to deal with. It's just... Just for sure. Yeah. All right, so Lord Zed tells Goldar, you know, send, look, the White Ranger is coming for us. Send down some putties. Goldar sends down three. Three putties. Tommy kicks... Three times, <laughs> and they are instantly destroyed. I like that this is the first time that the show's really recognised that three putties just does not cut it for the no. White Ranger. And Tommy like basically just says, yeah, that was dumb. Of course I was going to handle that. What were you expecting? I was writing down how long will three putties possibly hold him off for. Yeah. And by the time I'd finished the sentence, they were, they were all exploded. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, that's good. I appreciate that little moment. So Tommy says, nice try, Zed, but you'll have to do better than that. And Lord Zed goes, I will, White Ranger, even though Tommy can't hear. No, but I would too in that situation. Yeah, sure. So Tommy summons the Tiger Zord. Yeah. Uh, Uh, It's a good piece of music. Yeah, I like it. Gets you pumped. Yeah. So there is a Tiger Zord Dragon Zord fight. Yes. It is cut as we discussed. Yeah. It is not terrible. It looks okay. It yeah. is six seconds long. Yeah. Yeah, they, they did clearly not have a lot to work with there. Yeah. It's interesting. Do you think that that saying that the Dragon Zord is much more powerful than the Tiger Zord, or is it because Tommy's weakened? I, I guess. Although he was meant to get his energy back when he morphed, but temporarily. Yeah, I guess. I mean, you wouldn't want to say that the Dragon Zord is many times stronger than the Tiger Zord, especially after the events at the end of this episode. Yes. Who knows? Yeah, who knows? 
All right, so back in the past, yeah, everybody's running from the rats. Still, as yeah. they have been for like three days now, apparently. Yeah, that's just, you know, like, yay, everyone's running from the rats. It's just turned into boring Benny Hill. The Power Rangers are at the front of the running away, yep. which is not great. They should be at the back, like, making sure everyone else gets away. Yep. Not super heroic. Not their finest hour. Mm. This is what happens when you're left with Rocky leading the team. So, Tommy... Uh, on the ground, he's been ejected from the Tiger Zord. Back in the present, yep. Yeah. He hears Saba say, look out, the wizard, which is just great. Just, just great. It's like some Destiny dialogue. Yeah. Um, so, apparently now only one Tommy can survive. Dun, dun, dun. Which, it has not been mentioned before. Comes out of nowhere, but okay. So, the wizard says, look. You definitely, you can maybe beat the Green Ranger. You can't beat the Green Ranger and the Wizard. Yeah. So why don't you just surrender? And Tommy goes, well, I might surrender if you send me back to the place that you sent my friends. And evil Tommy says, you want to travel 200 years back in time? And Tommy's like, ha ha, sucker. That's what I want to know. Almost clever. Almost. Almost. Um... So we then see in the command center, Alpha's found them. Yeah, very quickly. Apparently he did not need much specific detail. Especially because they're not exactly 200 years in the past. No. Anyway. Um, that tells me that Alpha was not doing that scan he said he would do before. Because yeah. if he could find within a 50 year radius in a second, he could find within like a 500 year radius in 10 minutes. Yeah, I mean, look, if he'd spent half an hour on it, like it's definitely been, yeah. he could have searched... Back to a couple of centuries ago. Yeah. There's, it's a not unusual time travel convention that this episode uses where the past and present both run simultaneously. Yeah. So after five minutes in the present, it's been five minutes in the past. Yeah. Even though that is absolutely nonsensical and makes... There's no connection. It's just, it cannot possibly... If you think about it for more than 30 seconds, you go, no, that's not... So Alpha is watching... Like, he can't just go forward a year and find out what happens. Yeah. He has to watch what's happening now, even though now is 200 years ago. Yeah, he has to find out what's happening in the episode at this point. Yeah. Uh, all right, so basically they say, right, Tommy, the only way to get back into the past is the wizard's magic wand. Yep. Get the magic wand. And he's like, oh, no problem. Boop. Kicks it out of the <laughs> wizard's hand. It's gone. Like it was nothing. <laughs> Kicks the wizard. The wizard's just down. Yeah. Dead easy. Yeah. Green Ranger's like, going to have to go through me. They brawl for a bit. Tommy's like... No, I know. I'm going to just do a thing. Just jumps over the Green Ranger. Yep. Grabs the wand. The Wizard of... What's he called? Deception. The Wizard of Deception. Dead like Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yep. Zapped. Robe lying on the ground. Very, like, unceremonious end. It's the worst end to a monster since Weldo. What happened to Weldo? Weldo was just shot with a blade blaster. Oh, that's right. Yeah, poor Weldo. Yeah. Yeah, he, like he doesn't, there's no explosion. He's so threatening and menacing and, oh, we should say when they teleport back, uh, the wizard is standing in the bushes. He is. Which is not where he was before. No, he moved into the bushes just because he likes them. Unfortunately, that's the only time this happens in this episode. He does not crack the amount that I required to get him into the top ten. So Tommy grabs the um, wand. Yeah. Travels back in time. There's no learning curve on this wand. Oh no, he knows exactly how to use it immediately. Um, the rats kind of run away when he appears. Yeah. They know. Mm. Everyone knows. You yeah. see the White Ranger, you uh, book. The other Power Rangers are like, oh, thank God. I was worried we are going to have to eat damper for the rest of our lives. <laughs> yeah. um, and they say, what about the rats? And Tommy's like, there's no time for the rats. Which, like, yeah, once again, there is time because there's 200 years before anything will happen. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You can take care of them and then go back to a week ago and just stop all of this from ever happening. Yeah. Or you could just take 200 years stopping the rats. You'd still be fine. Yeah. <sighs> time travel. Yeah. Just so think about it for a second. Adam asks Marissa to go with him to the future. Yeah. And she says, nah. Nah, mate. <laughs> 
Uh, she does kiss him on the cheek. Yeah. It's kind of sweet, I guess. I guess. I guess. It would be sweet if they had any sort of relationship. If they even had... Like a as conversation. What they've done is look at each other once, yep. say maybe two lines to each other, and run holding hands. Yes, it's definitely children's television romance. And then, no. and then Adam asks her to leave everything she's ever known and gone to go to a bizarre future filled with monsters universe where he every day transforms into a superhero and fights a monster. Yeah, I mean, even if. A really cute girl came, like, arrived in this room right now and was like, I'm from 2200. I'm a Power Ranger. Do you want to go to the future? I would think about it for a bit. The only reason I'm not an unconditional yes is because I'm in a relationship with someone I care about very deeply. Look, like, outside I'm, of that. I'm not saying it's a no, yeah. but I'm definitely, like, if I've got 30 seconds apparently to make the decision, yeah. I'd be like, well, I mean, if she can time travel. I might as well just make the decision and, and come then back later. come back later. Yeah. Why wouldn't you just go to the future? Just to see. Yeah. Yeah, no, Marissa, that was a dumb move. Bad call. You should have gone with them to the future. Yeah. Because the future, we've got like vaccines and VHS proper bread and stuff. Like, you know, the future's pretty rad. Yeah, she's going to love Back to the Future, but then she'll watch it and be like, wait. What happened to me makes no sense. Yeah. I can just go back and forward in time whenever. Yeah. Why aren't my photographs all fading? <laughs> Woo, this show. Yeah, all right. So they're back in the future. Yep. Uh, Tommy destroys the wizard. He's already done that, but sure. Yep. Wizard's dead. Uh, the, the rangers summon the... Yeah, so the rangers are going to go take down the dragon sword with the thunder sword. Because it's the still thunder evil. Sword. Yeah. Str- weirdly enough, evil Tommy is no longer evil... <laughs> But the dragon sword is still evil? We're five minutes from the end of the episode. Yeah. The next five minutes, I guess, make sense as a series of events that happen. <laughs> in that, like, the next thing that happens isn't a clown in a black and white film going like, ooh, I cannot escape from a box. Yeah. Like, it's not, it's not like Twin Peaks happens all of a sudden. It's pretty close. But w- they don't make sense as any kind of coherent storytelling structure. And especially just like based on expectations of what has to happen to return to the status quo. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> no. Oh my God. All right. So for some reason, evil Tommy doesn't disappear. Yeah. But he's just now no longer evil. He's yeah, no longer under the influence of that spell, but he's just a guy who regrets his actions. But also can't stop the dragon sword. For yeah. some reason, we should have mentioned we skipped when Tommy goes back to the past. He stays morphed the whole time. Oh yeah, and that made me so angry because the last time they had this whole thing about we can't be morphed in the past because, because it's before we got our powers. Yeah. <sighs> okay, got that right. out of my system. So, for some reason, evil Tommy is now good Green Ranger Tommy. Yep. Regrets what he did, but can't stop the dragon sword. They have an almost nice character beat where Tommy gets to say to Tommy, it's okay that you're evil for a little bit. It wasn't your fault. It happens to all of me. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but I've never been able to like, be They've kept evil. they kept me evil. Yeah. yeah. So that's okay, Tommy. Oh my God, I'm talking to myself. I'm having a moment. He calls him Tom. Yeah. Which is... It's- all right, sure. I guess you got to have some distinction there. As lucky he wasn't named a name that doesn't have a short form. Yeah. Uh, so the Thunder Megazord and the Dragon Zord kind of fight in as much as any two things that are from different shows can fight on this show. Once again, it's handled reasonably yeah, well. It's fine. You know, there's. It's not like top ten Megazord fights. No. But it's perfectly fine. Yeah. They're about to use the Thunder Saber. Yeah. This is the point where my heart skipped a beat for a second because I was like, oh my god, this Are is heavy. Gonna, because on one level, it would kind of make sense yeah. for the Dragon Sword to just be actually destroyed. Yeah. But on another level, are we really going to watch them blow up the Dragon Sword? Yeah. In what is, as far as I'm aware, like a mostly kind of regular episode? That was my thought process at this point. I was like, oh, they could actually do this. And White Ranger Tommy even like runs forward in slow motion and goes like, no, don't. And they in slow motion do the Thunder Megazord hand slash action. Yeah. And then we get the like period Japanese illustration in slow motion. (laughs) And then the Green Ranger does a tune. Yeah. And the Dragon Sword just falls over. (laughs) It just falls over like he fell asleep. 
I'm pretty sure he would like squash as part of a building. Oh yeah, six hundred people die because <laughs> he's just like, oh, all right, that's time. <laughs> it's why couldn't he do that ten minutes ago? I don't know. It just, it, but it's hilarious. He says like, I can't control it except for this thing that I'm going to do where I control it. Yeah, they should have, they should have given White Ranger Tommy the dragon dagger and had him do it, and then like. Evil Tommy couldn't do it. It wasn't because of, like, the powers. It was because he's not Tommy. Yeah. <sighs> anyway. I mean, I think even having the dragon sword be destroyed, which would have would have been, like, a strong emotional finish this episode. That, yep. that really, like, oh, like, we didn't win totally. Yep. This is a fear victory because we had to watch the dragon sword be cut down. So he sends the dragon sword back into the ocean. That's Tom. Tom does yeah, that. Because yep. he can control it. Um, or why as Matt ocean, said, can I ask? Like, why does it have to be? Because it's ocean? Godzilla. All right. Uh, and at that point, I think you said, "Or oh, we could just keep it." Yeah. Like, why? Why did it have to go? Here's back? the thing. Hypothetically, right now, there's just seven Power Rangers. Yeah. Like, sure, the White Ranger is, I guess, use uh, the Green Ranger is using, I guess, some of the White Ranger's powers. But you want to tell me Zordon can't come up with some way to? Charge him with his Like, what beams? if everyone gives up a little of their powers and they end up with even just an additional body yeah. with the same amount of power and an extra giant robot? Yeah, that's great, right? Yeah. But no. Mm. Dragonzor yeah. goes back to the ocean, probably never to be seen again. Yep. Big sleep time. Now that just leaves us with one loose thread. <laughs> yeah. An identical copy of Tommy. Yeah. Oh, boy. So, so they've realised that they've left the rats back in the past. Yeah, and they have to go fix that right now. Yeah, they're running out of reverse time. <laughs> <laughs> this is a dumber time travel conclusion than the last dumb time travel conclusion. Oh, uh, I don't know about that. Yeah, actually, that's probably harsh. Yeah, it's not that dumb. Yeah. Okay, so they go back to the past and fight some rats. Yeah. There's no way those rats would ever have held up on film. No. They, they don't terrible. hold up on television. Mm-mm. Green Ranger does this crazy flying like kick. flying wire blur kick. Yeah. That we've never seen before and we'll never see again. No. Nah. Um, the white Tommy, like, throws a rat by its tail. Yeah. <laughs> and then they don't, like, kill the rats. Tommy's just like... Oh yeah, I could just... And he zaps them with the wand and that turns them back to rats. Yeah. He's lucky he didn't accidentally use the turn them into monsters setting again. <laughs> yeah. And make them monster, monster rats. <laughs> or make them large. Yeah. Then they have to get like a big wooden old timey megazord out. Mm. Oh, what? <laughs> yes. There's like five stage coaches that come <laughs> yeah. together. It takes like 10 minutes to raise them up because they have to be pulled on big Like ropes. Amish people raising a barn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the fact that we didn't see that is another incredibly disappointing mark against this episode. I, can't, I don't think we can blame them for that. Yeah, we can. I can. All so right. Matt, as you know, yeah. only one Tommy can exist in the same time. Yeah. By as you know, I mean as you've just found out. Oh, as they've told me with dialogue. Yeah, yeah. sure. So, Tom Oliver's just going to stay in the past. Yeah. But, and, and give up his Green Ranger powers for some reason. What he says is, oh, I'm not going to be needing these. How do you know? You, some rats <sighs> might turn up. So, Skull says, you could always just join like us in the army, I guess. Yeah. And everyone it, cheers? Yeah, because... Tom Oliver clearly did think through the implications of joining the British Navy just before the American Revolution. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> think for a second, five buddy. years from now. Because uh-huh. oh what else? Or think- it's going to be the American Revolution has its story about this dude who was doing crazy flips and shit. <laughs> <laughs> he he died very early in the war because he tried to use karate on a gun <laughs> with a musket. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It turns out that if someone's got a bayonet, there is not a lot of punching you can do to solve that problem. No. <laughs> oh dear. So uh, White Ranger Tommy demorphs him. Yeah. And gives him like period costume. Yeah. Although he generates his own tricorner hat. <laughs> yeah. Who knows? I just. <sighs> What's he going to do for money? Like, how is 
how is this not in every history book in the country? That's right. Like, and why does Tommy not, when he gets back, the first thing he does is look up in the history books. What happened to that guy from that time? Because I want to know how he died. I just... Make sure he didn't get smallpox a year after I left him there. Of all the diseases he'd have. Uh-huh. None of it makes sense. <laughs> but the one redeeming feature to me is now they could do an episode of Paranger's Dino Charge where they go back to like 1786 and they have Jason David Frank play older Tom Oliver. Because they've got all that... That would be incredible. Right? And he'd just be the Green Ranger again because of reasons. Yeah, like, sure. It's yeah. wide open. We have, we have a, hist- like, a historical timeline now with an extra Tommy Oliver that is not documented at all. Yeah. Completely there's, fertile there's storytelling ground. at least 40 years of this guy, potentially. Yep. Because what is it? The 1700s? Mm-hmm. So he could live... What, 60 years to the 1830s, 1840s? At least. Like, yeah. Yeah. And that, that's all, like, untapped, as far as I know, territory. Because Parrin just decided not to close up that thread for some reason. Oh, yeah. This show is just... It's such an insane ending. Because it's such a small scale, like, oh, we need to fill some time episode... That ends with a clone of the most popular character in the show's history just existing out there. You know what that does explain? In the Super Mega Force finale, yeah. one of the issues is that we see too many Tommy Olivers. Do we? I thought they covered that. that... No, they, they cut him out of like the teams, right. but in the big fighting shots, yeah. they couldn't work their way around it. Right. So clearly one of them is a time displaced Tom, Tom Oliver. Oliver. Yeah. That's great. I mean like it's just such an insane thing that I can guarantee you we will never ever cover again. No. And all I want is to just go and write like for I wanted to speak to Carl Higgins be like, hey buddy, can we do a mini series? Like <laughs> it's called called Mark Wade up. He's like, hey, we just want to do a five-issue limited series about Tom Oliver. Powery Ranger is... Ranger probably, because it's, it's like a long S. It looks like an F. What? You know, no, long S. looks like an F. Why? What? Why, does it, why is there a long S? I don't know, because that's where they put S's. Who put S's? Ye oldie days. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, was, just, I was not with you. I clearly. <laughs> I think we all noticed that you were yeah. not with me. All right. Um, we also see past Bulk and Skull meet. So they're clearly his supporting cast. Definitely. And like, they don't have to be like idiots. Bulk and Skull. No, not they can they're be, not. No, they can be like, you know, all we know is that Bulk's someone's uncle. We don't know anything about that guy. And Skull's in the army, but like... Especially with the Revolutionary War being a few years away. Like, the story potential there is pretty crazy, He's right? got, like, a, he'd have a green coat with, like, a gold sash. He has a little knife that's just a green knife. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and I, like, spoiler warning, just in case we ever get to do this in any sort of official capacity, but he just hikes into the mountains and finds the command center. Yeah. And takes a morpher. And is like, let's just do it. Oh, yeah, because Zordon's just up there. Yeah, but and he's, he's like, like, he's like, well, fuck it. I mean, it's worth a shot. Yeah. Like... Right? Yeah. And then, of course, the Morpher turns him into a period-appropriate Power Ranger. Of course, with, like, spurs on his boots. Yep. Oh, fuck. See? That's so much more interesting than anything this show would have ever done with it. Yes. Even knowing that it will not ever do anything with it. Yeah. So, um, we're going to be uh, speaking to Boom. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the future. We're not done. Yeah. There's one more thing for this episode to give us. Uh, so Aisha says, I'm so glad Zordon destroyed that magic wand. Yeah. But, sure, makes but sense. But why are you glad? It's a magic wand that can give you time travel powers and seems to, like, have no consequences. Adam looks pretty bummed. And Rocky's like, Adam, why do you look so bummed? Because <laughs> Rocky's an idiot. Yeah. Um, and Adam says, you know, I'm just thinking about, you know, one person in particular. Yeah. And I think Billy says, at least we know they're all okay now. No, you don't. They're all dead now. Yeah. That's how time works. Yeah. It's not now in the past. 
You don't even know that they're all okay. You know that they weren't killed by rat monsters. You don't know that they didn't get syphilis the next day. You know that they weren't killed by rat monsters then. There's nothing guaranteeing that that's not going to happen. It's just... You don't know... Like, unless you've got a history book that's re- like very really specific. specific about Angel Grove history in the yeah. 1770s. It's probably on record somewhere. They could probably go to like the local town hall and dig through their records and be like, oh... I guess it's good to know that what's a face lived another twenty five years probably before dying in scurvy or something. Yeah. Speaking of what's a face, someone bumps into Adam and drops all their books because of course they do. Yeah. Matt, who is it? It's a girl that looks just like the girl he met in the past. <gasps> oh, dun, dun, dun. Who is a completely different person and should in no way be expected to be attracted to Adam in the same way just because they look the same. That's exactly right. I mean, like the differences between past Vulcan Skull and current Vulcan Skull were drastic. There's no reason to think that she's, you know... I mean, even from a strictly nature versus nurture standpoint, she's diluted by at least four or five generations. Yes. Oh, way more than that, but yeah. You know, there's like... But anyway, she smiles at Adam. Adam does the goofiest... (laughs) It's goofier goofier than the dragon sword. Yeah, it is too. And uh, we freeze frame on that. And that's where we end. What the hell was that? What? The... Okay, here's the deal. Yeah. We started Return of the Green Ranger. Yeah. I did not know what was going to happen. Yeah. I figured maybe a Green Ranger clone. Yeah. And they fight him for a bit. Yeah. We got time travel. Yep. We got a clone who put a stick in his mouth all the time. Yep. We got a ghost who summoned a wizard. Yeah. Rita sat on Lord Zed's lap and Lord Zed wanted to give her a baby. Yep. Zordon did nothing. Nothing. <sighs> there was the Dragon Zord and the Tiger Zord fighting, and then the Dragon Zord fighting the Thunder Megazord. And then there were rats in the past. And then there was an extra Tommy Oliver that stuck around in perpetuity. Just. Yeah, it was crazy. So, uh, Rocky, are you sure Adam, Michael? Almost an Adam. I would say an Adam Just too. because... is so crazy. Yeah, like, at no point did anybody look at this script and go, have we pushed it too far? Yeah. All right, I guess we have to put the Wizard of Deception onto the creature feature. Yeah. Now, he didn't quite reach your threshold of bush appearances. No, and I, look, I set pretty clear standards. He did not meet them. It wasn't hard. Uh, he almost got there. But I was- mean... Yeah. One bush appearance away. So I think he can't go in the top 10 based on that. But look, here's the thing. Rita's at number 15. Yeah. Is he better than Rita? I kind of think so. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I'd agree with you. Yeah. Immediately above Rita. Yeah. Socadillo. Mm. Beamcaster. Mm. Snizzard. Bones. Serpent Terror. Oh. I think... Just below Bones. What do you think? Yeah, I'd agree with you. Snizzard is really only where Snizzard is because Snizzard is famously voiced by someone. Yeah. Um, but Bo- Bones was pretty cool and had a pretty cool gimmick. I, I remember Bones in a way that I don't remember most monsters. Sure. Because he had such a cool visual gimmick, power set, and entrance into the show. So, yeah. Well, that would put the Wizard of Destruction at number 12. A pretty decent spot. Which is a great first showing. Yeah. And uh, no new swords for the Ranger Danger sword board. No, I don't think that wand counts as a sword. No. No. I guess that's it. I guess past um, Skull had a saber. Yeah, I wouldn't put it on the board. No. What a weird... Just... Weird. It's a weird adventure, Michael. Yeah. So, Matt, we've only got one, two, three, four, five stories before the end of... Oh, no, sorry. I'm wrong. We've only got one, two, three, four stories before the end of the season. Wow. Does one of them involve going back in time again? Matt? Yep. Yes. (laughs) Yep. Almost certainly. (laughs) Yep. Do you know that? I think so, yeah. I, for some reason, I know that there is a lot of time travel episodes towards the end of this season. Well, uh, look, I'm looking at the title of the episode that's three episodes from now. Yeah. And if that doesn't involve them going back in time, the title is a dirty liar. <laughs> Perfect. Also, I'm incredibly excited about that one. All right. Uh, well, that's good. Next week yep. is episode 107. It's a one-off. It's called Best Man for the Job. Okay. 
Um, it's definitely not about Rocky. I hope it's no about matter a, what the job is. I hope it's about a wedding. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. Like Adam's got to be the best man at a wedding. Yep. And there's a like job. a bridezilla monster. It's taking you into weirdly sexist territories, I think. Well, maybe they could also be like a groom monster in a tuxedo. Okay, that'd be alright. You know, like a pair of married monsters. Yeah. But then it'd be sad when you kill them. Because if Rita and Lord Zed make one each. Yep. Yeah, I, I can dig it. It's probably not going to be that, though. No, it's not going to be that at all. I believe from reading the Netflix description, it's going to be something much more disappointing. Oh. So we'll be back next week. Yeah. Well, Ranger you... Danger Year 3, getting off to a crazy start. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah. Uh, we'll see you soon, guys. Bye, everyone.